everyone! In this video I'm going to discuss understanding producer surplus and I'll do two practice problems. So producer surplus is our way of measuring how well producers are doing in a market and we say that producer surplus is a measure of welfare. The way that economists understand this welfare is by taking the difference between the price that the producer sells their good at, that's P, and the marginal cost of production, abbreviated MC, for each unit sold. So for instance, if I was a producer selling and making cakes, and a cake cost me $25 to make, so that's the marginal cost, but I was able to sell that cake for $50, that would be pretty good for me because the price is quite a bit higher than the cost of production. Economists would say that I get an additional surplus, that is producer surplus or PS of, well, 50, that's the price, minus 25, that's the marginal cost, so equal to 25. In economics, we model the producer as one that always wants to increase their producer surplus, so is always preferring more producer surplus to less. Now, this gives some structure to the intuitive idea that higher prices are good for the producer because holding everything else equal, if we increase prices, we increase producer surplus. All right, so let's think about our first practice problem. A firm's marginal cost of producing sunglasses is given in the table below. Each pair of sunglasses is sold for $20 and the firm is a price taker. How many sunglasses will the firm produce and sell? What is their total producer surplus? So we read this table as, while well, the marginal cost for producing that first pair of sunglasses is $5, the marginal cost for producing the second pair of sunglasses is $8, $12 for the third pair, etc. Now, in order to figure out how many sunglasses the firm will produce, we need to recall that producers will only produce some goods if the marginal cost of production is less than or equal to the price that they can sell that good at. So they're never going to produce a good if the marginal cost exceeds the price that they can sell that good at. One neat thing that we can do here is just to add another column where we record the price of each pair of sunglasses, which is $20. And here the detail in the question about the firm being a price taker, well that's important because it means that we can assume that the price will always be $20 regardless of how much the firm produces. And once we set out the columns like this, it's really easy to see that, well if the firm sells one pair of glasses, the marginal cost for that first pair is lower than the price since 5 is less than 20 the marginal cost of producing the second pair of sunglasses is also lower than the price since eight is less than 20. This is true for the third pair as well, since 12 is less than 20, and also for the fourth pair, because 17 is still less than that price of 20. But at this fifth pair, the marginal cost becomes higher than the price, so 23 is not lower than 20. So using our rule here, the firm will definitely not produce that fifth unit and will only produce four pairs of sunglasses in this scenario. Our producer surplus is found by taking the difference between the price and the marginal cost for each unit produced, and then we add those differences up. So I can just make another column here where I find price minus marginal cost for each unit. For the first unit, we get the difference of 20 minus five, that's 15. For the second unit, we get 20 minus eight, which is 12. For the third unit, we get 20 minus 12, which is eight. For the fourth unit, we get 20 minus 17, which is three. And we're only going to produce these first four units. So now we can find the total producer surplus is 15 plus 12 plus eight plus three is equal to 38. Now for these sorts of questions, we can visually represent what has happened like this. We have two axes, marginal cost on the vertical axis and the number of units of sunglasses on the horizontal. The blue bars here represent the marginal cost of production for each unit. So that first height is five, for instance. The second height would be eight. Putting in the price at 20 here, we can see the price minus marginal cost for that first unit, for instance, is 20 minus five, so 15. We could do this for 
each of the units produce, we can see the total producer surplus is visually represented uh, as everything in green here. All right, let's think about another question that's a little bit different. We're told that supply is represented by the equation Q subscript S is equal to 4P and the market price is $50. We're asked, what is the total producer surplus in the market? Now, this question is different from the first question for at least two reasons. Firstly, we're dealing with an algebraic function where our quantity variable is taken to be continuous rather than discrete, as in the previous question. So actually, if I draw out the supply curve on a diagram, it looks like this here. We get this smooth line upwards. So I know that this function will come straight out of the origin because there is no constant in our supply equation. And I do know that this supply function will be fairly flat. The slope is actually equal to a quarter. You can check for yourself at home. Just put P on the left hand side and have a look at the coefficient on Q. Now, the second difference is that we're dealing with a supply function and not with a marginal cost function or with information that is at least obviously telling us about the marginal cost of production. But really, if we think about it just a little bit, we can see that all we need is our supply curve. And that's because our supply curve shows the minimum price that producers are willing to accept in exchange for various quantities. And that minimum price is just going to be equal to their cost of production, i.e. it's going to be equal to marginal cost. So in our cake example in the introduction, for instance, the minimum price that I would accept for that cake is just equal to how much it cost me to make, so $25. Otherwise, I just wouldn't make the cake, right? I wouldn't engage in the market. So we can take the height of the supply curve at each quantity to be tracking the marginal cost for that quantity. Now on our diagram, the price would be here at $50. If we substitute the price of 50 into our equation, we can see that the quantity supplied at 50 is 200. So in this market, 200 units will be supplied at this price. Our producer surplus is, well, just the sum of all the differences between our price and marginal cost for each unit produced. Now, if we take the difference for just one of those units, say Q1, just an arbitrary quantity, the difference would be just like this line here between the price and the supply curve, right? That would be the difference between the price and marginal cost. But in this example, I'm going to add up over all of the quantities supplied. And this amounts to taking the whole area under the price above the supply curve just for all of those units supplied. So up until Q is equal to 200. So we get this green area here, and that's the area above supply below price. So our producer surplus is just equal to the area of the triangle then. So we have half times base times height, which is half times our base will be 200 and our height is 50. And this comes to 5,000. So hopefully you can see that the diagram is pretty similar to the diagram in the last question, except because we're taking quantities continuous, we get an upward sloping smooth line like this instead of the stepped columns that we saw before. So this idea that we can find producer surplus by taking the area below the price above supply, just over the units that are supplied, well, that idea generalizes. So for questions like this, where we have a supply function, we can just always find the area below price above supply over those units produced, and that will be our producer surplus. All right, and that's it. There's two practice problems and an explanation of producer surplus. I hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are doing really well. Hello and thank you to my subscribers already. Uh, and I hope you guys are keeping happy and safe.